Ladies and gentlemen, I leave you with the words of Robert Ingersoll. They say that the eternal future of man depends upon his belief. I deny it. A conclusion honestly arrived at by the brain cannot possibly be a crime. And the man who says it is does not think so. The God who punishes it as a crime is simply an infamous tyrant. As for me, I would a thousand times rather go to perdition and suffer its torments with the brave, grand thinkers of the world, than go to heaven and keep the company of a God who would damn his children for an honest belief. I have pleaded for the rights of women, for the rights of wives, and what is more, for the rights of children. I have said that they could be governed by affection, by love, and that my heart went out to all the children of poverty and of crime, to the children that live in the narrow streets and in the sub-cellars, to the children that run and hide when they hear the footsteps of a brutal father, the children that grow pale when they hear their names pronounced even by a mother, to all the little children the flotsam and jetsam upon the wide, rude sea of life. I have said that my heart goes out to them one and all. I have asked fathers and mothers to cease from beating their own flesh. I have said to them, when your children does wrong, put your arms around him. Let him feel your heart beat against his. It is easier to control your child with a kiss than with a club. For expressing these sentiments, I have been denounced by the religious press and by ministers in their pulpits as a demon, as an enemy of order, as a fiend, as an infamous man. Of this, however, I make no complaint. A few years ago, they would have burned me at the stake, and I should have been compelled to look upon their hypocritical faces through flame and smoke. They cannot do it now, or they would. One hundred years ago, I would have been burned simply for pleading for the rights of men. Fifty years ago, I would have been imprisoned. Fifty years ago, my wife and my children would have been torn from my arms in the name of the most merciful God. Twenty-five years ago, I could not have made a living in the United States at the practice of law but I can now. I would not then have been allowed to express my thought, but I can now, and I will. And when I think about the liberty I now enjoy, the whole horizon is illuminated with glory, and the air is filled with wings. I then delivered another lecture entitled Ghosts, in which I sought to show that man had been controlled by phantoms of his own imagination in which I sought to show these imps of darkness, these devils, had all been produced by superstition, in which I endeavored to prove that man had groveled in the dust before monsters of his own creation, in which I endeavored to demonstrate that the many had delved in the soil, that the few might live in idleness, that the many had lived in caves and dens, that the few might dwell in palaces of gold in which I endeavored to show that man had received nothing from these ghosts except hatred, except ignorance, except unhappiness, and that in the name of phantoms, man had covered the face of the world in tears. And for this, I have been assailed in the name, I presume, of universal forgiveness. As far as any argument I have produced is concerned, it cannot in any way make the slightest difference whether I am a good or a bad man. It cannot in any way make the slightest difference whether my personal character is good or bad. That is not the question. Though so far as I am concerned, I am willing to stake the whole question upon that issue. That is not, however, the thing to be discussed, nor the thing to be decided. 
The question is whether what I said is true. Thank you.